participation would not have been possible. Veterinarians for the Game Department, U.S. Army, New Mexico State University, Colorado State University, and the United States Department of Agriculture were on hand. Also present was a special team of mite treatment experts from the United States Department of Agriculture to conduct and supervise the dipping operation involved. The State Game Commission was represented by Doc Griffin of Silver City. The capture effort itself involved many people from federal, state, military, and educational agencies cooperating closely to make the rescue operation a success. Details for the day's work were discussed and planned by the capture experts. Many hazards were involved in the operation, so nothing was left to chance. Time to go. Lift off. The capture chopper was followed by another, which would ferry captured animals from the mountain to the treatment site. Crews were ready for their first candidate as they waited around the dipping vat which was encircled by a berm to contain any possible spill of insecticide. Standing by two was a first aid station furnished by the Army. Thankfully, it was used only for the few minor injuries which attended the rescue operation. A communications van and fire truck were also part of military support with direct phone and radio communications to the outside available from this mobile command post. A military helicopter provided transport over the capture area for the news media, enabling them to get close to the action. Materials for use by the veterinarians were carefully laid out ahead of time, ready for immediate use as needed. Actual capture was done in two ways. The two-barreled rifle fires a tranquilizing dart from one barrel, a radio transmitter dart from the other. Downed animals were quickly located by homing in on the radio signal. As demonstrated during this test, the net fans out to ensnare an animal when fired from this very specialized gun. This device proved to be the most successful technique in the entire operation, particularly as the final stages were reached. When the chopper could be maneuvered extremely close to the quarry, a multi-barrel pistol was more effectively used to fire the net. This terrain was typical of the rescue site, making it extremely hazardous for the expert pilots and fearless crewmen. Thanks to their skill, there were no accidents. Weather conditions during part of the rescue mission included cold, high gusty winds, compounding dangers for those flying and causing everyone trouble and concern. This also slowed actual capture. Bighorn sheep have an affinity for the very roughest country. Despite the cliff, this animal was soon captured. Actual capture begins with the pilot maneuvering the aircraft as close as possible to the pursued animal. When close enough to maximize chances for a good shot, the gunner leans out far enough so that the net or dart will clear the chopper skid as it's fired. If the fleeing animal has been ensnared by the net, the helicopter lands as close by as possible immediately. In some cases, a crew member would jump from the chopper to grab the animal and hold it until it could be given a tranquilizing drug. Sheep which were hit by drug darts went down when the tranquilizer took effect. Both the drug and radio transmitter darts are in place on this ram. Tranquilized animals were then securely lashed into a transport bag of special design, slung beneath a second chopper, and airlifted from the mountain to the treatment site. Capture crews spotted this mountain lion from the air. This fat, sleek cougar no doubt had had easy living. Diseased bighorns were severely weakened with hearing acutely impaired by mites infesting their ears. No attempt was made to capture the cougar but an extremely large Barbary sheep was spotted and consequently captured. This Barbary sheep was, along with a deer and an oryx, taken from the area to be examined closely for mites and signs of scabies. No trace of infestation was found in any of the three. All were in good condition. It was sometimes a case of feast or famine at the treatment site for the crews who waited around between arrival of animals. But when the radio squawked, one coming in, all eyes turned toward the mountain, scanning the skies for the approaching helicopter. The chopper is soon in sight, bearing its special cargo in the sling beneath it. 
The heavily sedated sheep could care less about what goes on at this point. Upon arrival at the treatment site, the sleeping animal is gently lowered into the arms of the awaiting crew and carefully carried, still in the encircling bag, to where it will receive immediate attention from the teams of researchers. Special care is taken as the transport bag is removed from the animal to keep its head up. Otherwise, stomach contents might be sucked into its lungs, perhaps to cause death later. Its vital signs are immediately checked for undue stress or other physical problems. Not all survived. Mortality is expected when wild animals are handled. Because of the weakened condition of these diseased animals, higher than normal losses were expected. Happily, losses were lower than anticipated. Of the 49 captured, 16 succumbed. This trophy ram, some 13 years old, failed to make it. Procedures in the treatment area were thoroughly organized. Each animal was weighed. All were in poor condition. Every animal infected by scabies. Foremost in the minds of all who helped in the evaluation process was the welfare of each bighorn. This evaluation included recording various measurements for later comparison. Blood samples were taken from each animal for a variety of tests which would provide researchers with invaluable information. Ears were cleaned and mites were gently scraped from them so that later study might reveal more facts about this specific infestation. Hair samples were plucked from each animal. An analysis of hair provides an accurate index to the animal's overall condition. This radio collar was worn by a captured ewe. Put on in 1974 as part of a research project, its batteries had long since worn out. The Desert Bighorn Rescue was extensively covered by the news media, with heavy exposure given at both the local and national levels. Over 25 million Americans saw a special segment on ABC TV's evening news, Thanksgiving. Reporters and photographers crowded in close around the first sheep to arrive at the treatment site, making things a bit more difficult for those who were to provide treatment. News media people got a first-hand look at the actual capture aspects of the rescue operation from this helicopter provided by White Sands Missile Range. Scabies first affects the animal's ears, starting deep inside and progressing over the body as the mites multiply rapidly. For this animal, a moderate involvement at this point, mites reproduce very fast, having a cycle of from 8 to 12 days from egg to egg-laying adult. The mite spreads from sheep to sheep by physical contact. This ear is severely infected, and the animal was deaf from a secondary infection. Scabies has spread well down the animal's neck. Scabies were found in all or all over some animals. This lesion is on the flank. What appears to be hard, thickened hair next to the bare spot is actually a large scab covering most of the animal's side. The bare skin and severe itching causes animals to stop eating, making them grow progressively weaker and more vulnerable to exposure, other diseases, and predators. Although you cannot see the mites in this close-up of that lesion, they are present, so, so small that they're barely visible to the naked eye. They resemble a tiny flake of dendroff, until they move, that is. Here is the worst animal taken. This ewe was infected over 90% of her body. Every effort to save her was made, but she was just too far gone. The infection and thick hair scabs could be peeled from her much as if you were peeling an orange. November nights were cold, so the toxophene insecticide in the dipping tank was warmed to reduce stress on the animals when they were bathed in the solution. This process began by placing the tranquilized sheep on a platform above the tank itself. Now at this point, special attention was given to the animal's ears. They were thoroughly cleaned and irrigated with the toxaphene solution. For a few moments, the animals were actually submerged in the sun, supported by a special body sling. The crew wore protective clothing and respirators to minimize direct contact with the solution 
a very toxic chlorinated hydrocarbon. Its use is restricted by the federal government to treating mites in livestock. In a one, two, three operation, the sheep is totally immersed in the dipping solution, which saturates all parts. Special care to ensure that the animals do not inhale or swallow the chemical during the dipping process is taken. All mites are killed on contact, but a second dipping to follow later kills those which are newly hatched. Some eggs survive the first dipping. Excess chemical drains from the sheep, and then they are put into a trailer you see in the background where they quietly recovered from effects of the tranquilizer as they dried off in a warm bed of straw. When dry and alert, the treated sheep were released into a 20-acre paddock constructed of rope netting to await their second dipping. When certified mite-free, they were transported to the department's Red Rock Experimental Wildlife Area near Lordsburg to await future release. Operation Desert Bighorn Rescue was a resounding success. A gene pool of 27 animals is being held at Red Rock. Seven untreated animals are being held at New Mexico State University to help test effectiveness of new drugs and treatments. Fifteen of the total of 49 captured unfortunately died despite every effort to save them. Once the disease has run its course on the San Andres Refuge and danger of reinfection is passed, the sheep will be taken back. Wildlife experts expect that most, if not all, of the animals left behind in the mountains will perish from scabies-related causes. It was impossible to capture them all. A breeding population has been saved from almost certain extinction. How long will it be before these sheep can be returned to their home range? Well, at this point, there are too many unknowns. Research, though, continues, and hopefully it won't be too long. Meanwhile, 27 animals are in good shape, free of the vicious mites, recovering rapidly in the safety of the Red Rock Experimental Wildlife Area. They will soon be joined by the nine animals which were kept at New Mexico State University for study. As this television reporter stated, something significant was done, something that no one had done before. An entire herd of desert bighorn has been saved from almost certain death. New Mexico's wildlife heritage benefits all citizens. Your Department of Game and Fish will continue to manage and protect this heritage for future generations who, as a result of this bold undertaking, will be able to know and enjoy the fact that the San Andreas Desert Bighorn Sheep Herd is still alive and well. <laughs>